Yo guys, welcome back to some World of Warships. Today I've got something very, very fun to show you guys. The Petro Legendary Upgrade has been released, and it's kind of amazing. Look at that dispersion. That is just beautiful. Unfortunately, I don't think this one's actually going to do too much, uh, but we're going to get some pretty amazing games out of this Legendary Upgrade. I've got three of them to show you. Uh, some of them a little too aggressive. We do have to talk about the downsides of this Legendary Upgrade as well. But the positives, of course, are the 10% dispersion buff that this gives you, as well as the 10% AP shell damage. So you're not losing out too much on DPM, thanks to that extra AP shell damage, assuming you're shooting mostly armor piercing. This does fit in the sixth slot, so we aren't able to take range mod or reload mod anymore. That's kind of where the downside of this one will come into play, as well as Minus one consumable charge across the board, which is pretty important for a ship that does want to push in and tank. Losing one heal is pretty painful, I will say. Although that kind of dispersion and salvos do make up for it. And I'm still gonna play the Petro aggressively, maybe too aggressively. Uh, in the second game, I'll actually show you an example of where I lose too much HP at the beginning, and then we have to play pretty passive uh, into the late game. But for now, we're going to be pushing in and trying to make use of this insane ship. Having the radar out to 12 kilometers, you can see how we're able to radar most of Seacap from here. And our ship is so tanky that we can kind of sit here and be relatively okay in front of a Preussen and a Stalingrad here. And yeah, over 10,000 damage into the broadside of a Preussen with just our front guns only. That's six shells. <laughs> And I know there's ships that are able to do that, but Petro wasn't doing that as consistently, I would say. The AP shell damage here also helping us out a ton to get that extra damage in. I just found this ship to be a little too inconsistent, and that's why you haven't seen me play it all that much. I don't enjoy ships where it feels like too much of a dice roll if I'm going to do damage or not. I can have battleships for that, and if I'm playing a cruiser where our alpha damage isn't as high, that's just not as enjoyable for me. There you can see the improved pen angles on Petro. We still have that amazing bonus where people can be relatively angled and we're still just going to full pen right through their armor. That Des Moines did need to angle a little bit more to us. Uh, got a little greedy to be that broadside to a Des Moines who also has improved pen angles. But of course, Petro armor is much better than Des Moines armor. We're just gonna sit here in this gap now and try to deal with the enemy team as they're pushing towards us. It's one of the massive strengths of Petro is you just get to sit here and be very difficult to kill. You bring a lot of utility with your radar and a hydro or defensive fire, but to be honest, you should probably be running a hydro. Uh, although I have tried the AA builds before. The AA is not too bad on this thing. With the full build, you can deal with a squad of tier 10 planes, but it's not consistent. And a hydro is gonna do you a lot more utility-wise especially now that we have submarines in the game so much. We're gonna swap over to the HE. This is where we don't get the buff quite as much, although six hits in there is pretty nice for a decent amount of damage out of the high explosive, but we're not getting any sort of buff to the HE damage, fire chance, anything like that. This legendary upgrade really is focused on the armor piercing. But there are times where you do want to be swapping over to the HE. You do have an okay fire chance. With the improved accuracy, you can hit parts of the ships that you're actually going to full pen a little bit more often. I probably should have gone after this Kigero here, looking back on things, although I really was just looking for those uh, Dev Strike Salvos, are the ones that do a ton of damage with the armor piercing here. And I figured that since this Yoshino is going to get on our flank here, he's going to limit whether or not we can push him. So may as well go after him, and we do 21,000 damage there in that salvo. Already up to 173,000 damage, pretty quick if this thing can rack up some serious damage. And we're doing okay as far as tanking is concerned. 1.5 mil potential damage, and we still have over half our health and a heal left, which is pretty important. Hey, I'm also running Kuznetsov, which will give us a little bit of healing right at the end of our HP bar, but Petro doesn't quite have enough HP to fully rely on that. It's possible to just get burst down before that actually kicks in, since our HP pool is decent, but not amazing. It's no 100k HP like a Kremlin, or even the 70 uh, plus K that a Stalingrad might have. 
but it is still nice to have. We're going to push out here, trying to deal with this Kigero, landing some pretty nice salvos. That dispersion buff, even though we're not gaining anything with the HE is damage-wise, having better dispersion is always going to be helpful when dealing with destroyers. And we got the sub to deal with, so going broadside to a rune, and somehow he doesn't manage to full pen or get our citadel, so getting very lucky here. We are forced to do that broadside, thanks to the submarine. And even doing that, we still aren't able to dodge all these torpedoes. Oh, uh, it's just ridiculous. But we do manage to live, barely. And now we can try and deal with this Shimakaze. Unfortunately, no Hydros left and only one radar that is on a cooldown. So again, we're seeing that consumable minus one come into play here. We would have had an extra heal here and potentially the Hydro to spot this guy. Unfortunately, we don't, so I'll take a blind shot. We do get four hits in, and that is not quite enough to kill him. And Petro isn't quite maneuverable enough for us to dodge these torpedoes. So we're actually going to go down here. And we see that the Shimakaze was left on 500 HP. So one more shell hit, and we would have managed to take him out. But that's okay. We do manage a victory here, 214,000 damage, and a ton of battle impact. That's the name of the game here with the Petro. You're gaining an insane amount of battle impact when you have this ship on your team, thanks to its aggressive radar positions that it can take. Unfortunately, we do zero damage to this Goliath. He's just sitting stationary and at an angle that we should be penning. So there are times where the accuracy will let you down. And uh, this start is a pretty bad start for a Petro, I would say. Poor accuracy on that one. And look at how much HP we've lost. I've actually already used one of my heals. Down to half HP, only two left. And it's only gonna get worse from here. So the downside with this is certainly, you're gonna have to play a little more passive. Not something I enjoy doing all that much, so I am still just full sending it in like a Petro would. Uh, just cause it's more fun for me. But there are times where you do have to consider that you don't have the HP that you otherwise would have. Also, not having all the radars or hydros, you know, we've already used up one of them, so now we only have two radars or hydros left for the rest of the game, and we're less than five minutes in here. So, a lot of consumable usage very early on in this one. We do help get the DD killed, and that should help our team here, but you can see how we're getting clumped up in the north of the map here. So, we do have to continue to play aggressive. Sometimes you have to. Your teammates are just going to clump up and spawn, and you have to make something happen if you want to help them win. And we get super lucky here that the Goliath doesn't use armor piercing. We probably die there if he has AP, uh, even at this angle that I'm at. Probably too open to actually uh, bounce anything. And armor piercing back into him. We get four torp protection hits, unfortunately. But a couple citadels is nice. And using another hydro because he definitely torped us, right? There's no way he didn't. Look at how greedy he is. He's even greedy for the other side of the torpedoes. This time we do punish a little bit more. But that Goliath does have a lot of HP, and that super heal means he's still alive. And even with this Hydro, I'm still not confident enough to fully reverse out and finish him off. I am a little scared of those torpedoes. They haven't shown up yet, so maybe there's nothing to be afraid of. There they are. He actually single launched them, and in a position where it allows me to reverse out. So we will manage to do that. But we're out of healing now, guys. <laughs> we're like... What, seven minutes, barely eight minutes into this game, and I'm out of healing. And we have 18,000 HP left. So how are you going to do a match like this? Well, you got to figure out ways to impact the game. And look at that dispersion, by the way. It's not all perfect. Petro still has issues with that dispersion, but it is better. I do find it to be much better with this mod. Uh, but how do you impact the game here on such low HP without any healing? Left? Well, we need to find opportunities to flank but also not be the target that's gonna get focused. So going really, really wide here and playing at really long ranges, Petro can push in and be very aggressive brawling, but that same tankiness that allows us to do that makes us very, very difficult to kill if we're just kiting angled at longer ranges. And with this upgrade, we're actually gonna do some pretty good damage at those longer ranges. Uh, as far as if this legendary upgrade is worth it, I haven't even talked about that yet. We're nearly 10 minutes into this video. I think so. I, I would not want to play Petro without this after playing it with it now. In fact, I'm not even sure I wanna get the super version, which should be coming out here uh, in this update because it won't have this improved dispersion. I would just rather have Petro now. <laughs> 
Uh, I do value accuracy quite a bit. And honestly, the ship probably has a bit tankier of a hull too. But we'll see. I'll probably end up getting it eventually to play it some more on the channel. But for now, this Petro Leg mod is awesome. Our unique upgrade. They used to be called Legendary Upgrades. Uh, 19,200, I believe, is the research points that you're going to have to pay. Something like that. And that's a lot. And certainly not easy for newer players to get to yet. But for those of you that do have the option, this one is probably worth that cost. It does make the ship play a lot better. Here I probably should have just stuck with AP, considering how many shatters we're actually about to get on this Vermont. AP, having those improved pan angles will help out a lot. Even into angled battleships, you can aim up into superstructures and do some pretty nice damage. But 143,000 damage here. And we did manage to provide some pressure on this flank. And that should help our team get to a victory in this one, which is really nice, but scary. Not having the extra consumable there for someone who does like to play aggressive like myself. It's certainly a little bit weaker on the tankiness side, which is okay, because I do feel like our gun power has improved quite a bit. Just the carrier to deal with here, and I do want to show you that it isn't perfect, again, on the dispersion side of things. It's much better, and I do find it mostly consistent, but there are times like this where a big giant carrier like this with a huge citadel, well, we're actually going to not get any citadels in that salvo. <laughs> yeah, if we didn't even manage to kill a midway on like 10,000 HP or whatever, that's, that's pretty sad. But hey, we do get our reload in, and this time I think I get him? Yeah, there we go. There's our citadel. We do manage to win this one. 164, very good game still. But a little awkward when you do lose so much HP early on and have to deal with that uh, lack of an extra heal. I haven't really found myself missing out on a radar necessarily. Typically those do manage to kill the few DDs that are in the game or push them away. Uh, it really does come down to the heal for the most part in my opinion. Although with Kuznetsov, maybe you should just be getting a first blood and then you get the extra consumables back, <laughs> which we'll try to do here on this Zhao who is going to be turning out flat broadside. We get a decent hit in, but he turned flat broadside to our Vermont, as you can see on the map there, and somehow didn't take damage from him. A uh, good old battleship dispersion there. And in fact, I'm being too aggressive here, but considering it's Petro, I do find myself often just W keying in as much as I can, even more than I would in a lot of battleships, because I find this ship is just tankier than a lot of battleships, thanks to its concealment and just insanely small superstructure. It's just very, very difficult to get damage on this thing when it's angled. And this island isn't perfect, so it's not the best on this southern side of the map. Um, so we will have to turn out, especially when I see that the submarine is here. I'm not going to sit bow into subtorps and just get killed that way. May as well risk the turn out. We do get the first blood, which is going to be really helpful. And notice the Louisiana is striking us, which means even though he's over here, he's not able to shoot us right now while we're broadside. By the time he gets back to his ship, we should be angled. And yeah, we're taking some pain. Those subtorps are very, very annoying. And we're going to use our radar, and I'm actually going to focus the Sherman. Sometimes people who should just sit in the open and apply DPM uh, get tricked into playing it safe. And when they get spotted in a DD and radar and shot at a little bit, we're just going to run behind an island. And that removes their DPM from us and is going to help us get away. So sometimes that is the right play for that Sherman to duck behind that island. But I'm the only one with angles to shoot at him, right? So it does make sense there, I think, for him to continue just peppering us with uh, high explosive, getting fires and that. And especially considering Petro radar doesn't last particularly long. Benetto here, we're doing decent damage into him. Get one last blind salvo into him. The improved dispersion might help out there in blind shots as well. And in fact, we Citadel somehow. We somehow Citadel, one of those Italian battleships with it. They do have a turtle back, I believe, that should be bouncing. Maybe that was the higher tier ones, but it, I find it very difficult to Citadel Italian battleships in a battleship, let alone a Petro. But somehow we got it here, so I'll take it. This game is certainly turning into a blowout. It's not as close as some of the earlier games in this video, but I just had to show it because we're still just going to send it into people. The rest of the enemy team is got a lot of control over the sea cap here, and we're just going to run at them and see what we can accomplish. Citadels, there we go, into a Schlieffen. Feels pretty good. Fortunately, he's not looking at us. So we can go broadside and continue to use these islands to limit the people who are shooting at him. Or shooting at us, sorry. 
something I talk about all the time when I'm brawling in battleships. You need to take isolated fights, try and use islands to prevent the entire enemy team from focusing you. And the same thing applies in cruisers and destroyers. Honestly, if you're trying to play aggressive, you need to figure out opportunities to limit who can shoot at you and find opportunities to catch people off guard with broadsides like this Alcise here. Unfortunately, no citadels there, but okay damage, I guess, into him. And it does allow us to push up here and apply some pressure to this Worcester, who does get behind the island, unfortunately. But maybe a broadside Moskva. There's always opportunities like this in the mid to late game. Typically why I like this mid to late game scenarios a lot more, especially when we don't have to deal with a carrier or a submarine. It allows us to push into little chinks in the armor like this, and I typically have the most fun in these sorts of scenarios. Just watching to see if the Alsace is going to die there uh, before I fully commit to pushing here. We would be showing a lot of broadside to him if he was just going to stop there and then wait for us. So, got to be a little careful, certainly. Petro is quite tanky, but when it's broadside, it does have a citadel, albeit pretty low in the water. Very difficult to hit still, but it does have a hittable citadel. And here, don't ask me what uh, this Worcester was thinking, but hey, I'll take it and only get one citadel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least we have a decent reload on like a battleship. Imagine a Vermont there, a 40 second reload after that happens. <laughs> so that is the upside to playing a Petro. Even though we don't quite have the Alpha, we do reload a little bit quicker. And thanks to this leg legendary upgrade, we do get that extra dispersion buff that I personally really, really value. This game again, out of heals. All three of these, you can see, out of healing. And that was 16k, by the way, into that Proisen. Pretty insane. Uh, I like it a lot, but you can tell that I am right on the edge of having uh, not enough healing for a lot of these games. Uh, nearly 6k into the DD there, by the way. It's quite nice to have the Dispersion buff, certainly. So I really, really do like this upgrade. 220,000 damage in this one. Even getting ourselves up to four kills. Very nice. As for the build here on the Petro, I will say I was being very, very greedy, at least for some of these uh, games here. And I actually went no conceal, no survivability expert, going for outnumbered and heavy AP shells instead. So we still have a reasonable conceal of 13.8. I think Petro would have been fine with this conceal anyway. Like, <laughs> uh, not too bad. But you can see here, this does bump our AP shell damage up to 7,000 uh, damage, which is pretty good, uh, especially considering our reload is pretty decent. And we also have ourselves a nice amount of accuracy now. Outnumbered can be activated. It is difficult, though. I'm not sure about this skill in particular. I did want to try it though, considering accuracy is what I value. But if you're going for a normal build here on the Petro, I think I'd probably do something like this. Either consumables enhancements, or just go a pretty standard priority target. You definitely need Superintendent if you're going to take the Legendary upgrade. And then I'd go something like this. We do want the DPM increase from Adrenaline Rush, top grade gunner. Those aren't too difficult to activate. Concealment does get us a little closer to our 12 kilometer radar range in our concealment, which is quite nice. It's a much more reasonable build, I would say. Um, giving up conceal and survivability expert is probably going a little too far. It was fun though. It, it could work in some games, but it's not as consistent. Here we go, legendary upgrade right here, six slot and pretty good one, I would say. Reload mod is decent as well. Surprisingly, range mod does also give you slightly better dispersion in certain ways, thanks to the way this ship in particular has a very weird dispersion curve where it's very accurate at close range and then around 12 kilometers, it has this sharp drop off and the dispersion gets ex so much worse, 12 to 14 kilometers or so. And then it kind of levels off again, but it's still much worse than the uh, rest of the cruiser lines. But taking range mod actually extends that drop off point a little bit so you retain that better than average accuracy out a little farther. And that's why you'll see people recommend range mod as well. But now that this is here, I would personally rather just go this route. I think it's a little nicer to have that consistency even at closer ranges. It's just more consistent. And I like that personally. Other than that, that is the upgrades that I'm doing. The prop mod here is so handy when you're playing around islands like you often are in this ship. Maneuvering, also dodging shells at range. Uh, the acceleration is often enough to just kind of speed juke things back and forth on an island. 
Surveillance radar, of course, gonna be a very useful thing since this radar doesn't last very long. Only 18 seconds here with this build. Maybe you would consider running consumables enhancements for that, but uh, it is nice to know how many people are shooting at you it is, or looking at you. It's uh, very, very nice. If you maybe can make a play then, you can decide to push out or you can say, nope, there's like five or six people looking at me. I should play it a little safer. But that's going to be it for the Petro Legendary upgrade. I like it a lot. Let me know what you think in the comments down below if you have it already. I definitely would recommend this one. This one's definitely on the short list of very good legendary upgrades. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and have a great rest of your day.